Hello, and welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke, and I am smoking on this pleasant Sunday smoke a little bit of Dunhill's Nightcap in a Peterson uh, Deluxe 1S. Yes, that's sort of their pot, bent pot shape. This is a cool one from, I think, 1978, 1979. I can't remember the exact date on that. There is a hallmark on the silver, but a really cool and kind of rare rusticated deluxe system pipe from Peterson. And I'm smoking, did I say nightcap? Yeah, I'm smoking Dunhill's nightcap, but it's nightcap that I've had in a jar. I'm not flipping you off, I'm just scratching my eye. I've had in a jar for four years or so, so it's been mellowing for quite some time and it tastes really damn good. It's really good. You don't think of aging English mixes very much. Um, and for the most part, they there's a certain threshold, like they get to a certain age and then any benefits kind of drop off because the Latakia mellows out so much that you lose some of the balance. But I don't know, this four-year-old nightcap, looking pretty good, tasting pretty good. Mm. Now also on this pleasant Sunday smoke, I have for you a tale of woe, which I know a lot of you appreciate. You like hearing when things go poorly for me, and something definitely went poorly for me this morning, and I'll be telling you about that. And we also have our hashtag Ask Stuff and Things section, question section. If you have a question for me, and you would like me to answer it on the Sunday Smoke, send your questions or tweet them to at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. I don't know why I always stumble over that. <coughs> On Twitter, at SAT Bradley, hashtag ask stuff and things is the best way to get in touch with me. Keep those questions coming. You are a big part of this show. But then we also have some business. Today I've recorded several videos, started several videos, and we posted several videos. Recently, if you have not yet watched my review of the Leatherman Skeletool CX that posted last week, I love this thing. I think I even love it more than when I had recorded the video. I just sit around manipulating it. I have it in my hand most of the time while I'm sitting at my desk doing things on my computer. I just, I really like it. And it's almost impossible to really put into words why I like it as much as I do. I sort of talked about the, the aspects of the tool that I enjoyed when I did the video review, but there are these intangibles that I just can't quite put into words, but I, really love this thing. So if you haven't watched this review, check that out. That posted last week, the Leatherman Skeletool CX. And then I just recorded reviews, or a review, including these two items. These are uh, Das Offenmeer leather. Um, I did a review, I don't know how long ago it was now, of the original gun deck wallet. It was sent to me by Michael Bluth of Das Offenmeer. He is an active duty Navy. I think he's still active duty Navy. But he also has this leather company, Das Ufanmir, and he lives in Hawaii. I'm assuming he's stationed there. I'm assuming he's stationed there. But he has an updated gun deck. This is the gun deck quick draw. You might notice it looks a little different than the original gun deck. I reviewed this. This is the one I've been using the most. And then this is the top sider quick draw. Very cool. Um, really premium, really nice handmade, hand stitched wallets made in the US by a, a, a navy man. A, a, navy, a navy guy. Um, pretty cool. That review is coming up this week on Wednesday. And then I started a video which is going to take quite a while to actually finish. I think, again, a while ago, I was talking about perhaps getting a DNA test because I thought it would be fun. And I did. I got an Ancestry DNA kit. Um, they were having a big sale. It was like 50 bucks and they're normally around 100 bucks. And I decided, what the hell? And again, I know this isn't gonna be the most accurate thing in the world and you can debate how useful it actually is, but I just thought it would be a fun video to do. So I started the first part of the video where I go through the kit and I get my sample. Um, you can just see me spitting into a funnel for a while and I shipped away the sample, but it's going to be six to eight weeks, they say, or they claim at least until the results will come in. So I can't tell you when you'll be able to see the resolution of that video, and you're not gonna see the first part. We're gonna put it all into one video once I get the results, but look forward to that. That's coming up. But now let me relight my pipe. I'm gonna lean back and get ready. If you want a little schadenfreude, or schadenfreude, is there an uh at the end of that? I can't remember. Get ready, because this one's a doozy. Let me set the scene here. 
This happened this morning. And you can imagine a sleep-addled Bradley waking up, bleary-eyed, and of course I, I had to use the restroom. And I stumble into the bathroom with my iPhone 10 in tow, but I didn't have a case on it. Um, it was just the glass back, kind of slippery. And I walk up to the toilet, listening to a podcast at the time, I'm not sure which podcast it was, and I put my phone on the back of the toilet and proceeded to urinate. So yeah, that sucked quite a bit. My entire bathroom was completely covered in my own urine. My phone was completely covered in my own urine. My body was completely covered in my own urine. So instead of having my coffee and a nice pipe in the morning, uh, which I would go and do outside in the backyard with the sun streaming down, I had to bathe myself and wipe down my bathroom. The funny thing is that the iPhone 10 is water resistant, so it could have fallen in the toilet without much issue, really. I would just have to rinse it off. But because I tried to save it, I ended up getting water, or not water, but urine all over it, all over me, and all over my bathroom. It's the kind of thing that'll scar you for life. So I hope you enjoyed that little tale of woe. And now it is time for the part of the show called Hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. This is where you can send me a question. Tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things if you would like your question answered on the show. Okay, this one is from Dan. I'm just gonna say Dan. And it looks like he's Canadian. So uh, you know what that means. <clears throat> hey Bradley, hello from the road. Oh, hello from up the road and across the 49th parallel. If you haven't tried it, you should pick up a tin of C&D's 5 o'clock shadow. I, I don't remember seeing it in your list of reviews. It is from your reviews that I have started trying vapors. I have just tried Elizabethan mixture and I would say that 5 o'clock shadow is a bit richer. I really like the channel. Keep it going. Dan. Thanks, Dan. Uh, I hope you appreciated that Canadian accent that I did for you there. And I will look into Five O'Clock Shadow. In fact, I think I already might have it on my wish list, but I will check into that and uh, maybe you'll be seeing it on the channel soon. This next one is from Benjamin. He says, uh, okay, we're getting all these voice requests here. Could you read this in your best old gangster voice if at all possible? Okay. <clears throat> Bradley, I don't have Twitter, but I have a question for your Sunday smoke. How many pipes do you have, and how many out of that number are billiards? Could you read this in your best old gangster voice, if at all possible? Really enjoy your channel. Keep the content coming. Uh, it was less old gangster and more just kind of weird old movie voice. But anyway, I don't have a ton of pipes. I think I've addressed this before. I only have, I think, 10 in my weekly rotation, and then I probably have... 15 or 16 total that I don't really smoke that often and I'd say out of half of that number or half of that number are probably billiards I like billiards a lot um, I'm not smoking one right now this is one of my few bent pipes but I do have a few I have mostly billiards though not mostly probably 50% billiards okay this is from Wade he says um, does he ask for a voice? Doesn't look like he's asking for a voice. <clears throat> so we'll just use my announcer voice or my like movie trailer voice. At SAT Bradley. <clears throat> I've been looking for a coffee to try that isn't Maxwell House or from Starbucks. Do you know if there's a way to ship some of that there Lotus coffee to the Midwest? Hashtag ask stuff and things. Uh, he is referring to the coffee I drink all the time, Lotus coffee. Um, this particular cup of Lotus Coffee was purchased at the Bagelry in Bellingham. They brew Lotus Coffee there. I purchase whole beans of Lotus Coffee for my own consumption. I grind them up. Actually, I don't have a grinder like that. I grind them up and then I use a French press. It is a roast that is made here in Bellingham. 
And in preparation for this question, and I think I've actually looked before, I was trying to find out if there was any sort of retail arm of Lotus Coffee. It's really good coffee too, kind of medium roast, nice, delicious, excellent. And that's coming from someone from the Pacific Northwest who's kind of snobby about coffee. Um, but they don't have any retail arm. The only way I get the coffee is there are the blah, blah, blah. There are a few places which serve Lotus coffee in town and some of them offer whole beans for sale uh, along with, you know, you can buy the coffee or you can buy the beans. They don't have any sort of retail location. They don't have any presence on the internet that I can find at all. So I'm sorry. I don't think there's any way that you can get it unless you call the bagelry in Bellingham and ask them to ship you some, but I doubt they would do that. This is from I Burley. He says, You've had your falcon pipe for a while now. Any new bowls or stems to show off? Side question, what are your thoughts on using a falcon as your one and only pipe, just with a few bowls? I've not purchased... <coughs> okay, lose the voice now. I have not purchased any other bowls for my falcon pipe yet. Um, what are your thoughts on using that as your one and only pipe? I think it would work okay. I don't love it as much as... Some of my favorite billiards, I think it smokes, or not billiards, favorite briars. I think it smokes just fine. Um, there's something about holding it and the aluminum on it that just doesn't feel as warm to me for some reason or natural. I think I could get used to that. And I think if that were my only option, I'd be perfectly satisfied and perfectly content. But I don't find myself reaching for it as much as some of my other pipes, even though it smokes, I would say, arguably just as well. I don't know. There's just something tactile that it's missing maybe, but I'm sure I could get used to that if I just smoked it more. Okay, this one is from the Grim Reaper. He says, <clears throat> Viewers often ask to see your pipe or tobacco collections, gaming, even building computers. Curious. Has anyone asked to see you cut your own hair or coffee making process? Or is that just too creepy? Um, no, I don't think anyone's asked to see me cut my own hair or make my coffee. If they were to ask that, I would probably say no to the hair cutting because I don't even know how I would do that video because it's me like with the mirror looking in another mirror and it's very, it's very fraught. It's not an easy thing to cut your own hair, at least the back of your hair. I'm kind of good at it by now because I've had so much practice. I've cut my own hair since I was 15. No other person has cut my hair since I was 15 years old. And that's not something that I'm necessarily proud of. It's just a weird fact, I guess. Um, but yeah, I don't know how I would even do that video. And then the coffee making, it's nothing special. I'm sure all of you have seen a French press before. I just grind beans, throw them in a French press, put some water in there, wait four minutes, push it down, pour it out. Nothing that, nothing that exciting. I like the French press because it leaves a lot of oily residue in the coffee. I enjoy that a lot. Um, and then I think this is the last one. Is this the last one? From Austin Mills, he says, uh, is there, a, I have to make sure there aren't any accent requests here. Um, uh, okay. I'd like to learn more about giving my pipes a deep clean. Aside from pipe cleaners and scraping excess cake, which methods do you use to get rid of the bitterness that comes with smoking a pipe over a long period of time? Um, do I have a guide to pipe smoking that delves into this? I think I might. There are things you can do. You can sweeten your pipe with alcohol, either grain alcohol, um, get a little bit of whiskey, nice whiskey, maybe rub it around the pipe bowl a little bit. That could sweeten it. Uh, you could use isopropyl alcohol as well to do a really deep cleaning within the bowl. Make sure you don't get it on the outer finish of the pipe because most pipes have a dye which will come off with alcohol. So put it in the bowl, not on the bowl. Um, you can also do the salt thing. I don't know what you would technically call that, but you get sea salt. You fill the bowl with sea salt. Uh, usually you want to you stop up the stem if you have a pipe like this. Um, and you drop a little alcohol into that sea salt and it leaches stuff out of the pipe. That can help. Um, but yeah, just sweetening it with some grain alcohol works pretty well. Do that every once in a while. If it's starting to get bit bitter, make sure you're cleaning it well, scraping cake uh, if you need to. And uh, yeah, sweeten it with some Jameson or something delicious like that. So here you go, gang. I think we're probably around 20 minutes or so. And I think that just about does it for this week's Sunday Smoke. Make sure you tune in for the review of these Ofanmir Leather Company wallets uh, in the future. The Ancestry.com DNA test will be cool. 
uh, watch the Skeletool review if you haven't yet. Check out Stuff and Things Plays, continuing our Subnautica series on there. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to leave comments. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. Do all that good stuff. I appreciate it a lot. You guys are becoming more and more a part of the show as you ask questions and I respond and interact with you. So that is much appreciated as well. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend, Bradley. You've been the audience of Stuff and Things. On a pleasant Sunday, smoke. I'll see you later. Urine all over my face.